Oh yeah, that's a lot of text. And I, I did have a really hard time just parsing and understanding. Um, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. There's four th results that, well, that's not, yeah, there's four results that you can check. Um, first thing to know, it says complete the code in the active window below to draw a snowflake. And I like stopped reading there. Bad idea, right? So first off, I'm like, oh, I already wrote code to draw a snowflake. So I'm supposed to copy and paste it or I'm supposed to something. No, I mean, so obviously the students could copy paste, but if you go down to the one below, it doesn't have any of the nested loops. It's just got comments. But here's the key thing. They say, draw a snowflake of triangles, not of rectangles, which is what we did in the warm up. So just tell students as they're starting this, it's like, okay, pretend you learn something from that Ignore all that code. Just start with the base code below. And of course, if you really want to uh, nominally force them to do it more, move them all over into Replit. In fact, I would do that anyway. I got through the first two and then I had to move to Replit because I didn't have enough time to wait for all those things to draw. So I would recommend having students start this in Replit. And that will make it easier to say, don't look at the code you already did. So what is that supposed to look like? Okay, so we have an outer loop that's gonna still run 12 times. Okay, the inner loop is now size is going to be less than or equal to three. And then I didn't point this out, I should have, sorry. The turtle, yurtle turn is not 90 degrees. It's 360 divided by three. Remember the sum of the exterior angles? Yeah. All right, that actually was the first one and a half. It sort of says, do that and then figure out how many times you need it to run till you get all the way around. I feel like that could have been put together. Anyway, next, create a variable to use instead of 30 in the last turn command and change it to be something else. Try 45 or try whatever. So it's saying, you know, last time we, we knew we would go 12 times in the outer loop because we we're always turning 30 degrees on the inside. And so that like 360 divided by 30 was 12. So we calculated that and we put the 12 number in. Now it's saying, hey, let's have a variable that we can change um, so that uh, we can make that be flexible. Okay, so we have to do two things. We have to create the variable and give it a value. Um, we have to change the uh, turn amount that we turn at the bottom and we have to calculate what our outer loop header is. And I don't know what order you would do that in. I'm just gonna walk through it top to bottom. So first, there's a turn amount now. Instead, of, it was 30 before. I'm gonna, I set it to 45. And then I could have calculated this directly in the outer loop um, uh, uh, header. But I felt like it was easier for me to create a variable. And I think we might be able to use this later on. I can't remember right now. Um, okay, so outer iterations, again, it's always going to be 360 divided by your turn amount. But then you have to remember when to go down and change this expression to be not always 12, but however many outer iterations you just calculated that you need. And oh, don't forget that down at the bottom, your turtle needs to turn by that amount, not 30. Whew, number three. Boy, these are going a lot faster than when I was trying to figure them all out myself. Change the fixed triangle on the inside one. So we're, we're moving away from the outer loop saying, now let's make a fix to the inner loop. Let's, well, same thing, we're gonna move from something that's fixed, like a triangle, to an n-sided polygon. And that's gonna require two things. We need to set up a variable that says, how many sides do you want your polygon to have? And then we're gonna have to change the amount it turns in the polygon so it's not 360 divided by three, because it's a triangle, it's 360 divided by n. But n is not really a good name. Um, you should encourage your students to use good variable names. So I made an int variable called inner polygon side num. Yeah, only in computer science do we think that's a good name. But anyway, um, you'll see that on the inner loop, again, I'm not looping three times anymore. I'm doing sides less than or equal to inner polygon side num. And then the yurtle, after he moves, she, he, it moves forward, does 360 degrees divided by inner, not, inner polygon side num. One more to go. This is just to do something fun and bring back some learning from unit three. Add an if statement that changes the color of the pen before the inner loop, depending on whether the outer loop variable is odd or even. Now don't do what I did. I saw outer loop variable and I thought, oh, you mean like the number of times I'm running the outer loop. But that's not what it says. It's, we should probably say the outer loop controlling variable is uh, odd or even. So, and that makes sense because we're basically saying every 
every iteration of the outer loop, I want to change the turtle's color. So I get this nice blue, then green, then blue, then green, then blue, then green. And they particularly told us, they said, if it's the outer loop uh, iterator is uh, odd, it should be set to one thing and then even set to the other. So there's your i modulo 2 equal equal 1. And that was all done before the inner loop. 